Are you listening? PlayStation. When it comes to the PS5, PlayStation and Sony for the most part have remained pretty silent. Despite a logo reveal in February, two Wired articles, and a sketchy video showing off the PS5 load times, all we've had are rumors. Whereas other companies like Microsoft are proudly swinging their teraflop up and down the street like a Johnny Sins video. And if the person sitting next to you understood that reference, congratulations. You now know why their internet browsing history is always erased. And I will be the first to admit, when it comes to tech, I am one evolutionary step away from being a monkey. And when you use the word teraflop or the benefits of SSD over traditional hard drives, I genuinely have no idea what that means. In fact, if you go back and watch any episode of the Nerf Report where we talk about next-gen consoles, I just look nervously into the camera begging that none of you comment on and call me out by saying, this guy didn't even know the difference between NVMe and AHC. See, even with that joke right there, I don't even know if I properly understand the punchline. But this week, PlayStation announced that tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time, PS5 lead system architect Mark Cerny will provide a deep dive into PlayStation 5's system architecture and how it will shape the future of games. Now, some quick points here. Number one, this deep dive was originally planned for GDC and for all of the developers in attendance. But with the conference being canceled, Sony had to get extremely creative. And even Sony tried to manage expectations by telling gamers to align expectations you should anticipate a heavily technical broadcast from lead architect Mark Cerny here. We're mostly going to learn about specifications and key features, but probably not specific games. But even with knowing all of that, I don't think anyone saw this coming. Now, a gigabyte is not much data. Games are using five or six gigabytes of RAM on PlayStation 4, so boot times and load times can get pretty grim. The dream of an SSD, part of the reason for that five gigabyte a second target was to eliminate loads, but also part of the reason for that target was streaming. What emerges for an SSD is 825. So we hustled and built a custom decompressor into the I.O. unit, one capable of handling over five gigabytes of Kraken format input data a second. We should be able to start letting you know which drives will physically fit and which drive samples have benchmarked appropriately high. But you can release your first game on PlayStation 5 without making any use of them. I should start by saying, Mark Cerny did a great job. The information that he relayed to developers is honestly really great news. In fact, many developers are already saying that the PlayStation 5 tech is going to revolutionize the way that they make video games. But for the love of Kratos, PlayStation, how the hell are you going to let this be your first step to market? Like, realize for a second that this is the first official advertised PS5 event that you have had ever. And even though you tried to align expectations, you had to have realized that this video was not going to be received well by the majority of those watching. And it's not like PlayStation is unaware of the enormous level of hype out in the market right now. I mean, every announcement, every state of play, you say the same thing. We are not ready to talk about the PlayStation 5, so there will be no news in regards to the console. And I say this as a fan. Your radio silence is only going to hurt you. Because in today's world, silence is a rare commodity that is constantly being filled by pundits, influencers, and guys who build a set in their garage to talk about video games. When PlayStation goes months without commenting on the PlayStation 5, it creates a vacuum chamber of ideas that are based on rumors, but they are repeated so much that in many ways they become fact. A prime example of this was the PlayStation 5 and backwards compatibility. Sony had told investors that backwards compatibility was a top priority for the console, and left it at that. No comment on how far back backwards compatibility really meant, so pundits assumed that the PS5 would be backwards compatible with PS1, PS2, PS3, and PS4 games. But according to Mark Cerny, almost all of the top 100 PS4 games can run on the PS5. Which even this had to be clarified on the PlayStation blog afterwards. PlayStation wrote, 
We believe that the overwhelmingly majority of the 4,000 plus PS4 titles will be playable on PS5. We're expecting that backwards compatible titles will run at a boosted frequency on PS5 so that they can benefit from the higher or more stable frame rates and potentially higher resolutions. We're currently evaluating games on a title by title basis to spot any issues that need adjustment from the original software developers. And I guess technically, uh, PS4 games being able to run on a PS5 counts as backwards compatibility. But once again, for the first official PS5 introduction, that's not a good look. And it's not just backwards compatibility. The PS5 was rumored to be more powerful than the Xbox Series X, and it clocks in at 10.28 teraflops, which not only is under Xbox, it's underneath Google Stadia. And granted, Mark Cerny stated that teraflops are not a fair comparison in technology, but once again, for a monkey like me that doesn't know any better, when I hear, do you want 12 bananas or do you want 10 bananas? I'm gonna pick the 12, because do I need 12? Probably not, but hey, it's two more than the other guy has. And that's my point. This event was a terrible first showing for the PlayStation 5, because the majority of gamers have no idea what that data means. We just want to know what games will run on it, and what unique features does it have. And again, I say this as a PlayStation fan. I don't understand their marketing strategy for this console. If this was really meant for the industry, then make it an invite-only webcast and let the information leak. But instead, you promote it on your Twitter, which I have to assume that the majority of the 17 million followers are not developers. They're like me, fans. The information Mark Cerny shared is awesome news. And when you combine it with the amazing catalog of games that Sony has as exclusives, there's no doubt that the PS5 is going to be awesome, but use what made you successful this generation with the PS4 as your narrative as you move into the next. Be the best place to play. Uncharted, Spider-Man, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Last of Us, and Ghost of Tsushima. Because honestly, teraflops and specs are great, but games like those are going to sell your console. Hey, thanks again for checking out our channel. You know, this whole coronavirus stuff going on right now is, is pretty crazy, but uh, for those of you that are stuck at home, that aren't at school or aren't at work, and first time checking out the channel, welcome. My name's Bryant, and thank you so much for checking out our channel, and I hope whatever's going on in your world gets so much better.